Afraid, uh, well, I'm glad that she didn't say yes, because in fact she passed away two months ago. Um, so my, 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 my encounter with female writers is not, is not that good. Um, if you're so smart, you bring somebody. <laughs> right, next question. The highly specific time, space, culture, or indeed the clash of culture. Okay, we've got uh, 15 more minutes. Let's have a few more intelligent questions, like the last one. Oh. <laughs> yes, okay, go on. Yeah, at the back. The, the man with a with a, with a suit. Nobody's mentioned Murdoch. <laughs> Iris Murdoch, what, what? won the Booker Prize. The sea, the sea. Um, now, I was thinking rather more of the uh, contem contemporary situation in the UK. What sort of fallout do you think is, is the Murdoch situation going to have on journalism in, in particular? Yes, <laughs> well. Uh, Adrian, you're probably more close than anybody else um, on this issue. You write for the Sunday Times, he's your boss. I was in the, I was in the, the, um, the select committee meeting. In fact, if you look at the, the, the TV reruns, you can see me at the top left-hand corner behind James. Uh, well, you're whacked by Wendy. <laughs> Um, it was impressive. It was impressive. And, 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 I, and I, I, I went in, I sat in, the, I sat in the committee, I came out, that, that next day I wrote 2,000 words <laughs> um, for this Sunday, I guess, what was it, day after tomorrow. Um, and that afternoon I went to Heathrow and got on the plane and came here. And as I got <laughs> on the plane I thought, thank God, I don't have to think about them. Bloody hacking scandal anymore. I'll <laughs> be in Hong Kong and they'll have better things to talk about. <laughs> and what, um, seriously, for one moment, is there, what's going to be the fallout of it all? Who the fuck knows? I don't know. <laughs> you know, it, 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 we've already lost one newspaper. We've lost the News of the World, which I love, which was a great newspaper. Um, and as we were saying before, we don't have that many newspapers that we can start throwing them away. Um, you know, the, the, the point about freedom of speech is that it, uh, it, it's, about, it's not about the people who you agree with, it's about protecting the people you violently disagree with. That's, that's what's important about a libertarian society. And I think that this is, this is a sort of a, a madness. Um, that's come out of nobody who writes about Murdoch or about the press or about hacking or about any of this scandal, nobody is a disinterested party. There is nobody who stands back and says, this is an opinion which comes simply from, as David would say, observing the facts. Everybody has a dog in this fight. And that, I think, is why it's become a system, because it's where it will end. Who knows? I have a sense, I have a feeling back at home that people are beginning to think that in a week which had huge news stories, famine, a huge, huge, huge famine in North Africa, um, Europe, the Euro collapsing, Greece, perhaps Italy going down the pan, um, Dominic Strauss Kahn, I mean, whatever got him off the front page. Um, we also had a nurse who was killing people in hospitals. NASA. We had NASA. NASA. We had walk -in. We had we had the British Army got out of Lashkar, a, a place that it's been defending and has cost us a, a, a lot of dead soldiers. All of those things would have been naturally big front page headline stories, and none of them made it because we were arguing about people's telephones. I. It's a, I. I think it was a it was a great um, miasma of hysteria. But where it ends, who knows? Tom, was there, you want to 
want to say anything? No, I just think it's, you know, who re I mean, there was a point at which it changed in the national consciousness, and it was just a whole lot of hacks and executives arguing on the front page. The, 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 they, they said they hacked your phone, and you have said uh, you I don't really care. Care less. And why they? I mean, God only knows. I mean, most people have been hacked. It, it, it crossed it when the mini downer and, and the, the, the child, the murdered child. I mean, that was crossing the line. <coughs> Who cares about celebrities, minor celebrities, whoever it is? You just don't leave messages on your telephone. Secondly, the fact that this whole thing. Imagine if Murdoch suddenly said, "I'm going to sell the Times. I'm going to sell the Sun." Imagine who could get hold of that, and you know he is for all of, whatever anyone says about him. He's, I think he's very much a journalist, um, you know, proprietor. He likes newsprint. He likes stories. I think he's done very, very well with the Sun, News of the World, RAP. I love the News of the World. A shocking sacrifice today. They should have got rid of the Star or something, you know, not the News of the World. I think it's been blown out of proportion. Mm -hmm. I think the ramifications of the hacking thing will go on and on and on. I think in We've heard about the, uh, Just ask the question. literary heroes and heroes and heroines. What about the literary villains? Or in another way, who are the most overrated writers, both living or oh, dead? Oh, where does it start? <laughs> <laughs> now, that, that, that is a, a list, yeah. Most of them on the panel, I think. <laughs> And who do you revile? Uh, as a writer? As, yes, anything. I can't bear John Irving. John Irving. Yes. Living, living writer. <laughs> living. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Okay, doesn't I, I think the, 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 you really want, I mean, there were some sort of bad, bad writers, and then there were really, really bad, good writers. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's reckoned writers who are simply awful, and you would you have to go an awful long way to beat Virginia Woolf. Oh, God. <laughs> simply. Dreadful. Orlando is possibly the worst good book ever written. <laughs> Do you think Virginia Woolf is better than Orlando? I'd have put, I'd put stones in her pocket. I find her, <laughs> I find her completely unreadable. Oh. Um, but I think there's hot competition. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have to do journalists as well. Yeah. Body time being. <laughs> Straight. Not as a person, but as a journalist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I've asked Is there somebody else that. Um, um, I, I find, again, an awful lot of the, the so-called modernism, I find Ulysses and beyond belief in uh, name. <laughs> Finnegan's Wake? Worse. <laughs> I, I hate them. I just bought the notes for them. Yeah. But a book that requires notes. A work of fiction that requires this vast scholarly superstructure. I mean, it's what kills a Shakespeare play. The no, how about Tears Eddie? I mean, there's a new one. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, the Wasteland. No, 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 the Wasteland is wonderful. Yeah. The Wasteland is wonderful. The wasteland is wonderful. Oh, no, exactly. I mean, you need notes for that. Yeah. I'm not no, you don't. No, yeah. I, I want a troller. Not just trollers, but people who like trollers. No, you don't like trollers. No, troller is good. It's all that nice. I mean, that's like Coronation problem. Street with frock coats. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what we all are. We're all parochial in our own way. I'm sure you, with your high-mindedness, that sound you know, extremely grand and so forth, well, extremely petty, just like, like a parochial curate uh, out of a great book. Uh, unreadable uh, book, Don Quixote. Don Quixote, Don Quixote. unreadable. <laughs> unreadable? I think of the Alexandra Quartet. Yeah, I, I mean, I have now tried it five times, and I cannot get over the first one, which is called Olive or Justin. I can't remember. Um, uh, David, what, which which book have you started and have never managed to finish? And you? Oh, so many. So, I mean, really bad ones. Uh, no, and I, I had a phase when I in, read widely in fiction and really enjoyed it in my. One in my teens, one in my late twenties, and uh, another uh, continuing to my early thirties. I can't really remember a single novel after that that I've actually enjoyed. Uh, and this is this is a problem with me. It's not at all a problem with 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 the, with the novel as a form. I simply am not terribly interested in the invention. You've got a, a worst historian. A worst historian? Hmm. No, I mean, um, his, I mean, I think Andrew is, Roberts is uh, Andrew Roberts is, no, Andrew Roberts is a very, very fine historian, 
a relatively narrow scope of time, as most of us are. I think he's an excellent historian. Uh, in fact, what I find is interesting is, is that most of the well-known historians uh, that, that tend to get rubbished by the rest of the profession are obviously the best. <laughs> Okay. I, I believe in the winnowing of fame. Last, last question. Um, uh, I mean, Tom, is there somebody else that you can't stand, you can't bear? Oh, I could, uh, Lawrence, I can live without. Lawrence, what? D.H. Lawrence. D.H. Lawrence. Yes. Yes. Well, uh, you know, you haven't killed something. I'm constantly, which in the Tudor period is difficult, you know. I'm constantly, constantly reminded I haven't killed somebody. Or I didn't get them born. They're jolly useful for that. When it actually comes to great, bigger structural questions, because remember, uh, unlike Nicholas, but, but, but uh, unlike uh, Tom and Adrian, I tend to write in very big, big swoops. I mean, in other words, several, usually 150, 200,000 words. But also, within that, again, to achieve something like the polish of the essay form, chapter by chapter. I think big books need to do that. Mm. My wife reads everything that I write and crosses a lot out. And I take her once every, if I'm in big what? pain. <laughs> 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 you take her not enough. No, I was going to say every two months. I take her to what? Every two months. <laughs> <laughs> he said he went to the professor after all. Yes. I take her to a restaurant every two months. The <laughs> purpose of the entire meal is for me to quiz her on the next few chapters of my book. So it's, it's as often. She has three courses of talking about you. Yes. That's enough about me. What do you think about me? That's exactly what she does do. Uh, once every two months. Okay. Well, there it is. Okay. Um, another question? <coughs> no problem. Yeah, there's a hand. Yes, yeah, okay, yes. Yeah. Which other writer would you question to improve your own writing, and what would the question be? Right, because he wrote in a particular sort of English, a, a Latinate English, that I would never want to write like, but I'm amazed and fascinated by how he did it, epigrammatic English. Um, I would love to be able to write like Mark Twain, who I think is probably the best writer of the sort of writing that I do. Um, and I expect that his answer would be as dull and as mundane as unhelpful as mine would be. <laughs> I'm such an admirer of the writing of Dominic Dunn, and especially of his novels. And I once did a thing which in fact... I think he's one of the worst writers I've seen. I think he's one of the most wonderful writers I've seen. I think they were so excited about what was called. I felt only shame when I was on the Well, I have one of W.H. Smith's <laughs> too. And, and I thought it was rather good because it's the only prize that's actually determined by readers mm -hmm. as opposed to a cabal of these dreadful things called critics. So I very, much, <laughs> very, very much approve of the W.H. Smith prize. You're paying the attention I'd have loved book. it even for something good reads. Yeah. <laughs> You're paying the attention to the Booker Prize. Um, I was once long-listed for it, foolishly. <laughs> um, no, I, I'm, I'm, I, I don't think I'm ever really going to be up for literary awards. A <laughs> wistful note. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, okay, well, that, that's that. Um, all right, that's a few more questions. Okay, good. Um, I was wondering with today's... You don't have to kneel down, stand up. Okay. <laughs> I was obsession, the obsession today with social networking, things like Facebook, Twitter, and all the language, the digital like internet language that we use a lot today. I was wondering how that would affect writing in the future and if they would have to include words such as wall, poke, tweet and how that would affect quality of writing. And just what was the first pretend. word? <laughs> what? What was the first word? Tweet, wall, poke. What's a wall? Wall. Wall actually. is where you write on your Stop. Facebook. Your status <laughs> on your wall. And nowadays everyone's obsessed with social networking on the internet. I was wondering if people well, You're talking about all the uh, 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 abbreviations. Yeah, and you're obs and, and the actual and the large part of life that is dedicated to the internet. That would have to be included in future novels. Do you think novels. it will affect How would that be? Writing. Is that your question? Yeah, of course it will. I mean, sorry. Yeah, I think yeah. language, people bang around, oh, this is a destruction of the English language. Language is a constantly evolving, fluid thing. And these words will, whether we like them or not, what's the one? LOL. My, my favourite one's FFS. <laughs> 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 That's fantastic. But these 
words are now moving into language as people 30 years ago, 100 years ago, 400 years ago, oh, it's all going down. You're absolutely language. right. It's very convenient to have abbreviated swear words because then you get through the firewall. Because you find anything out. <laughs> everything, everybody can be told everything all the time. And it's really changed the dynamic of it. And I think you're quite right. I think that, that someone's tried to make one movie, You've Got Mail. About mm. about social networking, about and it was about fifty years ago, and it wasn't terribly good. But I, I I expect you're quite right. I expect it will become what the lesser was in Victorian fiction, or, or it will be or, or something completely completely different. But, you, but it will change the way people write. I was writing. I'm writing a novel at the moment that goes from the 1970s to the present date. Day, and I had to figure out when the mobile phone suddenly became an everyday object.